Howdy howdy! So, sometimes you have a great idea for painting, but it does not turn out so good. You could put it aside and learn from your mistakes, or you could make it into something really pretty, which is what I want to show you guys today. This technique is pretty easy. We'll use two colors to make a mountain moonscape. I hope you guys like it. Let's get down to the canvas. So this painting did not turn out exactly as planned. There are parts of it that I like, but a lot that I don't. So I'm going to show you guys how I kept those parts that I liked while making this painting into something that I really love. So first you need to figure out what you like about your painting. For me, I really like this area up here with a bunch of cells, and this one down here also has some cool cells. I'm not super fond of this entire middle section. It doesn't have any cells and it's not super interesting. Unfortunately, it's the first thing that your eye goes to when you look at this painting. So we're going to accentuate the parts that do look good. We're going to paint one moon here and one moon here. It's going to be like you're viewing it from this angle and the moon in the lower corner is a reflection in the water. I'm going to be using the same paint that I used to pour this originally. It's Delta Karim Coat in metallic 14k gold. Right now I am deciding how I'm going to make my moon and I decided that I wanted this little piece of blue going over the moon so it kind of looked like a little cloud and I just made a half circle on top and a little bit on the bottom so it looks like the moon is just peeking through the clouds. If you're not super good at making perfect circles, feel free to use a stencil or even stamp on the color that you want for your moon. Now I'm going to move on to the moon's reflection in the lake that will eventually be here. For this part, I want to make sure that it's not a perfect circle like I made the moon in the sky. This is a reflection and it's like a ripple. So I want to make sure the lines are kind of wavy and it doesn't look exactly like a circle, but kind of matches that shape that I made before. Metallic colors tend to be a little bit sheer, so you might need to go over this several times to make sure that you have a nice, bright, metallic moon. It was so metallic that I actually needed to cover up the light so that you guys could see it a little bit better. So now that we've made the parts that I like pop, we are going to cover up the parts that I don't by making a mountain range and a lakeside. I'm going to use Apple Barrel Gloss in black to paint the mountains. To start, I'm going to paint a horizon line. I'm thinking right in the middle of the canvas, I'm going to have the mountains go up into this kind of boring area, swoop down, and make a little valley for the moon to shine into. So here goes. There's that horizon line. It doesn't have to be perfect because a lot of paint is going to go over this. I'm going to start by painting the very top of the mountain, just so I know I'm covering up anything that I don't like. I'm going to make the mountain cascading down and add a couple little interest points along the way. I want to make sure that everything I don't like is within those boundaries. As I fill in the mountains, I can add any more little cliffs or hills to the mountainside or flatten out areas if I think that it will make it look more appealing. I generally use a finer brush when doing this initial outlining so that I have more control over what I'm painting. Looks better already. I'm just going back in and adding a couple more pieces to this mountain so it's not just a curved line. Alright, let's paint the water's edge. I'm going to use this water's edge to cover up any other bits that I don't like about this painting. 
Since the water's edge is more smooth, I don't need as fine of strokes, so I can use this bigger brush to fill in the landscape a lot faster. In the end, it doesn't matter which kind of brush you use as long as it's one that you're comfortable with. As long as you're painting on a dried painting, you can actually wipe off any paint with just a damp paper towel. So now I can make the water's edge exactly how I want it and I don't have to worry about wiping off the painting underneath. Make sure that you're extending that background over to the edge of the canvas. I'm adding just a little bit of black on the bottom to make it seem like you're standing on the water's edge looking at this moonset. Depending on the paint you're using, you may need several coats. I found that I needed a couple for this black. I went back over with that finer brush to make sure that all those outlines looked crisp and perfect. You might find it easier to turn it upside down to get some pieces, especially if your paint is already wet. Depending on the points of interest in your painting, your silhouette may look a little bit different than this. Use your imagination to make a shape that'll fit your painting. I'm doing another coat of gold on the moons to make sure that they really, really pop from the background. I want them to seem like they're shining through. When you're happy with your moon and your landscape, you can stop there. But I'm going to take this to the next level by adding some reflections onto the mountainside. I lost a little bit of the footage of me starting this, but basically all that I'm doing is highlighting the places that light would naturally fall on the mountains. You can use your imagination or you can look at pictures of mountains to see how their peaks naturally catch light. And once again, a beautiful shot of the back of my head. <laughs> I'm using a fine brush to paint these lines onto the mountains. You could use a Bob Ross technique and use a palette knife to do this as well. I chose a brush because this painting is so small and I don't have a palette knife small enough to make lines like I wanted. You can add as many or as little reflections as you'd like. I tend to get a little carried away with these. Don't forget to add some extra gleam on those little hills. Now that we've made all the reflections on our mountains, we're going to start adding a little bit of highlights to the water and the water's edge. I'm working with the natural lines of the painting and adding ripples into the water to make this painting look like it's coming to life. I actually am not super happy with how these ripples turned out, but I still like it more than I liked the original painting. And the very last thing I'm going to do is add some rocks into the water to just give it a little more realism and depth, as well as covering up any tiny chunks or bubbles that might be in the paint. Some finishing touches and we're all done with this painting. I really like how this moonscape turned out. I think the painting looks a lot better than it did originally. It only took two colors and not a lot of time to make this into something that I really like. I was a little nervous to paint on this painting, but overall I'm happy that I did it. And I hope you guys like how it turned out as much as I did. I really love how the metallic moons pop out of the painting. Next time you have a painting that you don't like, you guys can try this at home. Let me know how your paintings turn out.
Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what I can improve on and what you would like to see in future videos. See you guys later.